Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is Iconic, and this is part two of isomers. So, in the last video, I got off talking about diastereomers, so I'm just going to go into it. So, like I said, I was just going to repeat myself one more time. Compared to enantiomers, right? Enantiomers, we got to think of mirror images, right? Diastereomer, non mirror images. Um, and we said enantiomers, right? They have opposite configurations in all their cryo centers. But, however, di diastereomers, they have opposite configuration in one or more chiral centers but not all because if they were all then there would be what enantiomers so yeah this is a bunch of words makes no sense let me show you guys a picture and hopefully it'll make perfect sense um let's give you a wedge right here a wedge right there and then a wedge right here oh br hydrogen now let's now okay first thing right non mirror now these guys are diastereomers how do we know this first and foremost right they're not mirror images right if you were to take this guy and just reflect it right draw you know just say this was a mirror right you would see you're not going to get this guy um, so these are non-mirror images. That's the first thing. Second thing is that they have opposite configuration in one or more chiral centers, but not all. Clearly, you can see that, look, from the previous example, in antimers, right, all these wedges became dashes. But over here, only two of them did, right? So there's two, I mean, there's and there's one point, because that's not a chiral center, right? This point right here, this is a chiral center, right? And if you do the configuration for this, these guys, you'll see they'll have opposite configurations. So um, I don't know. I mean, you can do the configuration. Maybe let's just say this is an S. I mean, this is an R, and this one is probably an S. Um, but basically, they have opposite configurations in one or more chiral centers, but not all. That's the key thing. Because if it was all, it'll be an enantiomer. So that's what uh, a diastereomer is right they're basically non-mirror images right and they have opposite rns configuration in one or more carlos carlos centers but not all of them now there's a uh, diastereomer is also like a, a broader term right and if you're going back to the very first thing that i had at the beginning of my of part one the whole flow chart diastereomers can be divided into two groups into geometric isomers and epimers right and so you have geometric isomers and epimers i'm going to talk about epimers first so that's the, uh, these guys they can be broken down to geometric isomers and right epimers my weird arrows <laughs> so Epimers are a specific category of diastereomers is that is that basically one they're non mirror images right but they have these two molecules we're going to call these guys epimers if they have opposite configuration in only one chiral center so opposite configuration in one chiral center or chiral center, stereogenic center, same thing, chiral center. So that's the key thing about epimers is that they are diastereomers, but in the sense that they have opposite configuration only in one chiral center. Um, let me show you guys an example, and it'll make sense. Just erase this quickly. So. Let me get this out of the way. So we're going to talk, we're talking about epimers right now. Let's say we have. Can you guys see this? Okay, cool. So we have molecule like that. The same thing. Talking about my little what, with dashes. Br oh hydrogen. I do well, my dashes got messed up right there. 
So this, these two pairs, right? We would call these guys epimers because look at if you just if you just look at them, you can see what they're clearly not mirror images, right? Because if you were to reflect them, if you were to take this guy, flip it, then all these uh, dashes would become wedges. So clearly they're not mirror images. So these are diastereomers. But more specifically, we can call these guys um, epimers because why? They differ in RNS configuration at one point, right? At one chiral center. So right over here, right? You see what you see right over here, this guy, uh, this hydroxyl group was a dash and now over here it's a wedge. So that's what an epimer is. And then now let's talk about geometric isomers.